Hey everyone, it's Dirk. Welcome to Build Interactive Social Networking Apps. This is a sample chapter from the course. For more information and sample chapters, please visit me at developerinspirus.io slash social. All right, hey, it's Dirk. So in the last video, we have successfully created this waterform collection view. In this video, I want to enhance this collection view a little bit. The first thing I want to do is just very quickly change this status bar into white. The second thing is we want to have this corner into be rounded. The last thing we want to do is you notice that as we scroll this, and there will be a time that this one is focused, but it is overlapped. And it will be like this, right? And so the scrolling experience is not as nice as we expect. We want it to be always at this stage. So if it, I just scroll a little bit like that, the system will make it like this. So that one interest will be in focus of the to the user, right? So let's learn how to do this. I will open up the home view controller and the first thing we will do very quickly is we will set the status bar to be white so let's go with the view below and just right before that we use the preferred status bar style and we will return the dot light content right and so let's run that right so we have this status bar to be white to be light that matches our design okay so next let's have this rounded corner for each cell so how are we going to do that how about just go to the cell class and then go back to down below and then in this layout sub views we will call the super super dot layout sub views okay and then in here i can configure the self the self here is just a cell okay so i will do the self dot layer dot corner radius and that will be five. I want it to be five, right? In the, in the, uh, you notice in our design it should be five. And self dot clips to sub bounds, clips to bounds, and we have to set it to true so that this view it could clips those corners, right? So let's run this. And then there you go. In it we have that beautiful one. So how about let's change it into ten to see what's going on yeah actually it looks quite nice so maybe just leave it there no, 10 is nice right all right and I just want to mention that a lot of time um, people prefer to click into the cell and then they, they go with the attribute inspector okay and then in the user defined runtime attribute they prefer um, they add some key path and then the types and the value, that's perfectly fine. But um, I noticed that sometimes I define that a lot of things in the complex project using storyboard. Then the storyboard just like ignores those runtime defined. So it's just two lines of code in here. So it's not a big deal at all. All right, so next thing we want to do is we want to allow the collection view. So scrolling, make a better scrolling experience. And the secret thing about it is, let's go over the UI collection view. I will hold command, and then I will click this UI collection view. Okay, so you notice that this is a collection view, and the collection view inherits from UI scroll view. And that is a wonderful thing because UI scroll view has tons of properties and methods for us to configure itself. And one of the things that I love the most is the UI scroll view delegate. So in this, let's conform to the UI scroll view delegate by writing an extension again. So I just prefer to use with each extension, I will conform to a different protocol or delegate and that way we can like break down our code very nicely so for this we will have an extension of the home view controller and that it will inherit equal conform to ui scroll view delegate okay 
So in here, we will make the scrolling pane to each interest, meaning that for each interest, it will just focus on one of those. And so the first thing we need to do is we'll need to provide a target content offset of this scroll view. We will tell the collection view, which is a scroll view, right? Where exactly it should stop. So when we scroll it like that, we will use we will make some calculations, some math, so that we tell it where exactly we should stop this scrolling. Okay. So suppose that we wanted the cells to be very flush with the left edge, and we will ignore the content inset. We currently have to center the cells, so we need to ensure that the content offset is a strict multiple of the cell width, which is that. And that will include this space between cells. Okay, so that's the idea. But let's go into the code and we will see exactly what is it. So, in order to do this, I will implement the method called scroll view will end dragging. So, we do scroll view will end dragging and press enter. So here, the first thing I want to do is I want to grab the layout of the collection view. So let's do let's layout equals self dot collection view question mark dot collection view layout, and it is as a UI collection view flow layout. Now, a collection view has not only has data source has delegates, it also has something called a layout. A layout is something. The collection view is wonderful, is very powerful because it separates from the layout to the data source and the delegate. It allows us to just configure the layout and use the same data source and delegate so that we have a very customized layout. It's not that the same as the UI table view, right? So just remember that UI collection view flow layout. UI collection view flow layout is one of the standard layout in UI collection view. And then we want to use the cell width including spacing. So I would use let cell width. And that will including the spacing. It means that it will enclose this spacing of 20 pixels, right? 20 points. And we will do layout and we have the item size and this is a type cg size so i want to have the width and let's do the layout dot minimum and that is line spacing well there are two kinds of minimum it will have minimum line spacing and it will have minimum inter item spacing okay so with if we are scrolling horizontally like that we will use the minimum line spacing which is this one and we, if, if we use scrolling vertically we will use the minimum minimum inter item spacing okay all right so next i want to access the underlying memory value and we want to getting that the of the target content offset okay so it sounds like kind of like um hard Kind of like some big term, but don't worry. Okay, it will make sense to you. And we'll use the target content offsets over here, and we'll use the var offset. That is target content offset, and we'll use memory, and that one will gives us a CG point. And then we can set those offsets. So before our calculations, we have to compare that compensate for all the content inset by adding it to the content offset because we can see more to left and as a result of the inset so we want it so that like when we scroll like this it's always like that okay it's make it will be like this right so let's do that we have the index we want to calculate what is the index right now of the interest in the interest group array so we want to do offset dot x and we'll plus scroll view dot content inset scroll view dot content inset and then we want to do the left 
and then make it into a parenthesis and we will divide it by the cell width including spacing right so that will give us the index of right now what is the cell what is this item currently on the screen okay just based on the whole width of the scroll view and then the width of the cell all right and then we will do something like um, let's route it index because this is the result of a division we want it to be rounded so we will round it with the index let me see what is this oh it just yelled at me because we haven't used this offset yet but stay tuned xcode okay that is one of the thing in xcode 7 if we don't want if we don't use a variable or constant it will yell at us at us and say that you have never changed use that make it to let make it into underscore things like that okay so right now now we have the routed index let's change the offset into cg point and we have the x position the x position we will do the routed index times the cell width including spacing routed index times cell width including spacing and we will minus the scroll view content insets dot left dot content inset dot left and the y we will use the negative of scroll view dot content inset dot top okay so we have the content insets of a scroll view which is something like that we content inset and then we just minus that okay and then we have the offset which is a cg point and then we want to assign the target content offset which is this one because this one we can go not only set but also get okay so now we will set that target content offset dot memory equals offset okay so let's recap this we will first get the layout of that and then we will sell with it we will calculate the width of the cell including the spacing and then we will calculate what is what is the index of this currently showing item and then we will assign this offset maybe i will delete and paste it here so that it is more fluid okay oh yeah it should be like that yes all right and this scroll view will end dragging it will be called whenever we end like that okay so let's find out let's run this and a lot of time now a lot of time that when you run this and nothing happened you didn't get the results even if you already have this extension of home view controller and this subclass it conforms to ui score view delegate so there are two cases may happen the first one maybe your code right down here is false the second one is you need to go back to main storyboard and set the delegate for the collection view to be this view controller because the delegates for collection view is ui collection view delegates right it's also a ui scroll view delegate so we will have to conform to ui scroll, scroll view delegate okay so now when i score it like that and it will make it back okay it doesn't allow me to like it will snap back essentially okay see that very nice right right so it will has a much better experience scrolling experience than you just like have it right down here and doesn't show anything okay so it will snap back like that all right good job guys so i hope that you have been enjoying this tutorials if you have any questions just feel free to post it right down below and i will be glad to answer all of your questions so now here come your challenge in this video your challenge in this video is to create three buttons and configure those buttons okay and let me show you those buttons will look like um, after you complete the challenge 
it will be much very much likely your your button in the prototype so here is the discover button okay the new interest button and we want to have the um, user profile button and notice that this is a button okay because a lot of time you may be do use an UI image view maybe that's fine but I just prefer you to use a button because maybe the user want to cling to that and you want to change allow them to change the profile image okay and then this is a button and the way you can do this to be a rounded corner is just to use very much the same way that I show you how to use this as the rounded corner you can use to add a runtime or you do it in code I just recommend you to do it in code okay so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any questions again feel free to post it right down below or in the forum until the next video I see you Thank you for watching this sample chapter from BU Interactive Social Networking Apps. I hope that it is of great help to you. This is a course I designed to help developers learn to design and make prototypes, start developing beautiful apps with great care for design in mind, help designers to start making their own apps. One important part of this course is the foundation for you to connect your app to the world by using Pause as a backend service. For more information and sample chapters from the course, visit me at developerinspirus.io slash social. Till next time, go out there, learn new things, craft your ideas, and contribute to the world.